In this animation, we shall look at some examples and understand how problems based on properties of different quadrilaterals can be solved. Take a look at this square. We are given that the length of diagonal QR is 11 centimeters. We need to find the length of SO and the measure of angle SOQ. Now, as the length of diagonal QR is 11 centimeters, we can say that the length of diagonal PS is 11 centimeters too. This is because the diagonals of a square are congruent. Also, as the diagonals of a square bisect each other, the lengths of SO and OP are equal and are given by half the length of PS. Therefore, the length of SO is equal to half of 11 centimeters, which is 5.5 centimeters. Now, another property of the diagonals of a square is that they are perpendicular bisectors of each other. This means that they bisect each other at right angles. So, the measures of angles ROS, SOQ, QOP and POR are equal to 90 degrees each. Therefore, the measure of angle SOQ is 90 degrees. That was simple, wasn't it? So here we get to know that the diagonals of a square are congruent. Congruent means equal in length. So if you measure RQ and if you measure PS, they will be of the same measure. It is given now here 11 centimeters. And the other thing is they are perpendicular bisectors. Perpendicular means a, a line which forms an angle of 90 degrees. And bisector means it will divide the line segment into two equal halves. Okay. So, because it is a perpendicular, we know it is a 90 degree angle. So, here we know that diagonals are uh, equal in measure and the diagonals bisect and there is a 90 degree angle which is formed over here. Look at this rectangle. We are given that the lengths of the sides EF and GF are 6 centimeters and 8 centimeters respectively. We are also given that the measure of angle GDF is 65 degrees. We need to find the lengths of DF and XE and the measure of angle FDE. Now, we know that the opposite sides of a rectangle are congruent. Since segments GF and DE are opposite sides of this rectangle, they are congruent and their lengths are equal. So the length of side DE is 8 centimeters. Now, triangle DEF is a right angle triangle and segment DF is the hypotenuse of this triangle. So using the theorem of Pythagoras, the length of DF is calculated as shown. In a rectangle, both the diagonals are congruent. So the lengths of segments DF and GE are the same. So the length of GE is also 10 centimeters. Like a square, the diagonals of a rectangle two bisect each other. So, the lengths GX and XC are equal and are given by half the length of diagonal GE. Therefore, XC measures half of 10 centimeters, that is, 5 centimeters. Now, we are given that angle GDF measures 65 degrees. Since the four angles of a rectangle are right angles, we know that angle GDE measures 90 degrees. From the figure, we see that angles GDF and FDE together form angle GDE. The sum of their measures is hence 90 degrees. So, the measure of angle FDE can be obtained by subtracting the measure of angle GDF from 90 degrees. Therefore, the measure of angle FDE is 25 degrees. 
okay boys now if you haven't understood much in this there is no problem because for now this year you are not going to have to solve these type of questions but what you need to know is opposite sides of a rectangular congruent means are same so this you have been learning from class 1 and 2 that the opposite sides are same and the other thing you know should know is diagonals of a rectangle bisect each other means these diagonals they cut each other exactly in the middle and then 90 degrees angles are formed at the vertices so if you know these things then you will learn how to solve these type of questions next year so if you know the total of this angle d is 90 degrees and if so much of it is given then you can very easily find that out so for that you needed to know the property of a rectangle so that is how the use is why you need to know the properties w x y z is a rhombus the length of side y z is 8.5 centimeters the length of segment WT is 5.1 centimeters and the measure of angle WXY is 110 degrees. We need to find the lengths of XY and WY and the measures of angles WZY and XTW. We know that all sides of a rhombus are congruent and hence of the same length. Since it is given that side YZ measures 8.5 centimeters. We can say that side XY of the rhombus also measures 8.5 centimeters. Now, so here can you see how did we get one of the answers length of XY? How did we get? Because we know that in a rhombus all the sides are congruent. Okay, so if we know one side automatically we will know all the other sides. So if you knew this property, you would easily be able to get this answer. Just like a square, in a rhombus too, the diagonals are perpendicular bisectors of each other. So the measures of angles XTW, WTZ, ZTY and YTX are all equal to 90 degrees each. Therefore, the measure of angle XTW is 90 degrees. Also, since the diagonals are bisectors of each other, we can say that the lengths of WT and TY are equal and given by half the length of WY. That means the length of WY will be equal to twice the length of segment WT. That is, 2 times 5.1 centimeters. So, the length of diagonal WY is equal to 10.2 centimeters. Another important property. So, this is the other important property. Diagonals of a rhombus bisect each other. With the help of this property, we have managed to solve this thing. The of a rhombus is that its opposite angles are congruent. So, we can say that the measures of angles WXY and WZY are equal. But we are given that the measure of angle WXY is 110 degrees. So the measure of angle WZY is also 110 degrees. So this is another property. Opposite angles are same. So if we know this angle, automatically we will know this angle. Here, we have parallelogram LMNO. We are given that the length of XN is 4.6 centimeters and the measure of angle L is 102 degrees. We need to find the length of diagonal LN and the measures of angles N and M. In a parallelogram too, the diagonals bisect each other. So, in diagonal LN, we can say that the length of XN is equal to the length of XL and they are given by half the length of diagonal LN. So, it can be said that the length of LN is twice the length of XN. So, the length of LN is equal to 2 times 4.6 centimeters, which is 9.2 centimeters. In a parallelogram, the opposite angles are congruent. 
Here, angle L is congruent to angle N, and hence their measures are the same. So, we can say that the measure of angle N is 102 degrees. Now, since the parallelogram is a four sided closed figure, we know that the sum of its four angles is 360 degrees. So, the sum of the measures of angles L, M, N, and O is 360 degrees. We already know that the measures of angles L and N are both 102 degrees. So our expression simplifies and we get the sum of the measures of angles M and O as 156 degrees. Since angles M and O are also opposite angles of the parallelogram, they too are equal in measure. So, our above expression can be written as 2 times the measure of angle M is equal to 156 degrees. This is simplified to give the measure of angle M as 78 degrees. So here again. Now that you have seen the properties of different types of quadrilaterals, try to answer these questions. Feel free to use your notebooks to draw reference figures. So here you learn that diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. Means they cut them exactly in the middle. They make it into two equal halves. Then opposite angles of a parallelogram are always congruent. Means angle L will be equal to angle N and angle M will be equal to angle O. So with the help of this property we have tried to solve this here. Then one more thing that we learnt is when we add all the four angles of a quadrilateral, we get 360 degrees. So with the help of that property, we figured out the measure of angle M. Angle M was asked, so we found out that also. So using different properties, how we can solve is thought over here.